Okay, so talking about uh, composting, I think, I don't think I need to go through the composting. Why should we be composting for this group? Um, except for the fact that we would be, you know, making a stable product, making a usable product, uh, making something that can go on our pastures, um, uh, killing pathogens, all that kind of stuff. So I, that's not the part of composting I was going to go into. I, what I was asked to do was to show you a lot of different ways that compost presents itself. So. So as you can see here, um, we talked a little bit about carbon and nitrogen today. And there's going to be variation in carbon to nitrogen in, man in manure, in horse manure especially. But horse manure is pretty darn good when it comes out of the animal to be composted. And that's the point I want to make. All we have to do is give it a little bit of help. And for horse manure, we can get a decent product. We can get a compost product. And that's what I'm going to kind of work through today is the lazy man's way maybe of composting or the less input, uh, le less time and energy input of composting. Um, but it's in good shape already. One thing we use is just plain static piles. Everybody stacks their manure, their horse manure. Oftentimes we see it down by the stream and it's not where we want it. But if they simply stack that manure in that long table shape, a windrow, it will facilitate the process. So we, no matter what manure it is, no matter what material it is, we always want to see it in a windrow. And a windrow can be anything from um, five to eight feet tall. When we, can make this pot, when we can make this windrow and allow the air to circulate around there, that's what's making the process work. That pile will heat up. If it's too short, if we have a three-foot pile, it's probably not going to heat up. But if we have a five to eight-foot pile, it will heat up, and we're going um, to get a good compost product. What we found is by using a method like this, we actually make a better organic product compost than if we turn it a lot. And there are reasons why we should turn more and reasons why we should turn less. But one of the things that we get with this is we get a higher N and a higher organic matter. So for the people that are using that product, we actually are getting a better organic product. And I'm using organic in the sense of strictly organic because they want the organic matter and they want the nitrogen in a product that's turned a little less. We have different, different types of turners. So we have turned windrow piles. And you know, most horse farms aren't big enough to have a specialized piece of equipment to turn their manure. They'll probably be using a loader or a bobcat or something like that. And those work perfectly well also. But um, an auger type or, you know, they're all different type turners. I'm going to show you a couple of them. Um, the loader cert certainly is a, a useful piece of equipment that a lot of farms have, at least a little one. Um, they can move things around. They can push things around. They can do some turning. I was asked to talk a little bit more about buildings and containment and all that kind of stuff, and I will do that. Um, I actually feel that making compost outdoors is a good thing. Making it in a windrow is a good thing. Um, I like to have those sheds and the containment and the roofs for storage of the product. So I like to make the compost outside and I like to store it under uh, some kind of shelter before it's going to be used. Three bin systems are excellent, and you're going to see different regulations are going to tell you you need a roof, and different regulations are going to tell you not. And we could debate that all day. But if it's being done right, we're not going to get a lot of runoff from those piles. That's the whole essence of the science of composting. We provide the right mixes, the microorganisms do the work. And that's, you know, when we were out on tour yesterday, we were seeing that those microbes are doing the work in those piles, in those systems and doing a great job of it. Um, three bin systems I like a lot, or, or multiples of three I like a lot. My grandmother taught me that many, many moons ago. 
And the reason that we want those multiple piles is because we have one that's active, one that we're adding to all the time, one that's finished, and one that we're ready to use. So having that strategy helps because this end of the pile has a different age than this end of the pile. And it's going to be further along in the composting process. So we can make this pretty simple for people if we, if we work on it, especially with horse manure. When we get to dairy manure, I wouldn't be talking this loosely. Because with dairy manure, we have a lot, you know, somebody asked Mike a question yesterday about, OK, well, do we have to put more material? Do we have to mix anything with the horse, matu horse manure? Mm, not usually. Sometimes it needs actually more nitrogen because we've put a lot of bedding in that mix. And that can throw things off also. So oftentimes we need to do that. With that dairy manure that we saw afterwards, we saw that that material really needed some bulking material, some more carbon to be able to use that. So it really does depend on the mixes. But having a, a, a multiple bin system is, is a really good thing because we fill up the first bin, we turn it to the next bin. We fill up the first bin again, and on and on until that's finished. Another one, uh, one of the things that's really important if you're going to do a multi-bin system is to make it the size that your loader can work in. <laughs> a lot of people will make a b barn and forget that their bucket won't fit in it. You know, and then you're really in trouble. I cut that board three times and it's still too short. So think about those things. We do set them up for all different sizes and all different things. And we've even, in different programs, we've bought people buckets to specifically work in, in different size bins. As you can see, lot, lots of different bin systems. Um, this is another one, and they're using the, this is a, a farm in Vermont, actually, uh, right actually in Burlington. It's right outside of Burlington. And they are composting a lot of different things there. But I wanted to show you just that shell that they're using uh, up in the right-hand right, right -hand corner. They're just making some of the compost underneath that. So they just have a, sh a roof, and they um, are able to make a really good compost product. They are taking in horse manure. They're taking in food scraps. They're taking in a lot of different things. And honestly, there's opportunity there. We're in a different composting world right now. And people are looking for places to bring material, food scrap and things like that. And those are not a bad thing to be mixing in small amounts with the manure and, and making yourself into a business, you know, transforming things into a, a small business. Uh, a lot of farmers found that, you know, one of the families of those, the, you know, one of the sons of those families actually took over the manure management business because we had never really done that, but it really is a big job and it needs a person and it needs someone to manage it well. Um, well let, me, let me just jump back there for a second. This one down here in the, in the right hand side of the frame that's a heat transfer unit, and I'm going to end with heat transfer units because there's a lot of heat that's coming off compost. We run from 120 to 150 degrees in compost piles. Think about that as an energy source. It's tremendous. That is um, something, and I will refer back to that when I get to the last slides. These guys are poultry farmers, and they're actually just you know, composting inside of a hoop house. And a lot of them like to hot compost inside hoop houses, especially in poultry. It, it helps to manage moisture a little bit. We get to the really big guys. These are straddle turners. Um, you're going to be a very large facility to have anything like this. But we have a situation, or we had a situation in Long Island, now we have one in the Hudson Valley and one in central New York, where people actually share a turner like this. This one's a little large to be moving on the roads, but, but we have itinerant, what we call itinerant turners. And they can go around to the smaller farms that need two or three turns a year to make a better product or to make a more homogeneous product. Um, and it works very well. Farm, sometimes farm service providers own those pieces of equipment, and we have a lot of that, people that just go out and cut hay or people that just go out and, and, and harvest grain and things like that when the time comes, but they also come and they turn our composts in, in some places in New York State. This is another structure. Um, 
I'll point out a couple things on this. I don't think I have. Uh, there's a, people know what a sugar shack roof is? So it's a vented roof on top so that the steam can get out of that roof. That's a, that's a wooden roof up there, but there is some steel in that. Compost eats buildings very easily, very well. It's very efficient at that. So we really don't want to have a metal roof on top of a compost facility. We, it would be better have to have a wood roof or um, some kind of a coated roof, some kind of a, uh, something to prevent that, the organic acids from eating through those roofs. But this is a really nice building. We actually, this is our prison systems building. And about 45 of our prisons in New York State compost their food waste. But I show you this one because it's a nice, a nice setup. It's got three quarter walls, so it's got a push ball, and they compost all around the edge of that uh, inside of the building. So they can push right against it, they can turn things, they can move things, they have a lot of freedom with that system. Um, that one. Concrete, concrete block systems. This is just a manure holding bin that is just being, they're just starting to fill it. But they compost, they actually compost mortality. It's a butcher that has a lot of different livestock operations on it. Um, so they compost mortality in one side and manure in the other side. And it, it has worked very well and they like it. And that's right outside of New York City. It's a 100 acre farm in New York City watershed um, in Westchester County. We saw newer ones of these yesterday, right Molly? <laughs> these are the earth tubs that we saw um, and a really neat piece of equipment. They don't work quite as well in really cold temperatures. Um, we've tried them in, in colleges, and when those students go home for break, darn it, those things freeze up sometimes. <laughs> so they're still useful, they're still a good piece of equipment, but we may want to, we do need to put them in some kind of a shelter, not necessarily a heated shelter, but something that gets them out of the elements, out of the weather. And then they work quite well um, at universities, at small farms, at um, lots of different places. We saw these in person yesterday, but maybe some of us weren't on the tour. Um, this is an earth bin, and I didn't add any more pictures in from yesterday. I, these are, this one is actually in Rochester, New York, and it is a similar system to what we saw. They put the greenhouse roof on it because it's a facility that's shared between a nature center and a school. And they were afraid, I, are, Molly, are all, of the, are all of these, do all these have roofs now? Yeah, in the beginning it was questioned whether we wanted a roof or not, but with kids around and with all that kind of stuff, this could be a very dangerous place to get stuck in. So, but really efficient, neat systems. We go larger, as you can see, I start small and I go up a little bit larger. We talked a little bit about bedding yesterday, and this is actually a BRU, a bedding recovery unit. It's used for uh, cow manure, and this one was used for cow manure, but um, there's question, debate, discussion about whether we should use horse manure back under horses if it's composted or not. We did quite a bit of work with that and, and other things that are similar to that. This is one that's a uh, more recent technology. It's called a heat transfer unit and this barn actually was retrofitted to, um, to turn it into the heat transfer unit. It's AgriLab technology technology and they um, produce that they are out of Ontario Canada um, but this is particularly this I'll, I'll go back and forth but this barn was retrofitted it was a regular cement floor they cut channels in that floor um, this is a new barn that they built and you can see uh, in those pictures we've got um, perforated PVC pipe and then we have boards that go on top of those perforated B PVC pipes. When we have a, a system that's going to have air being forced or sucked, blown or sucked, we have to be careful about hole size and making sure that those holes don't get clogged up. So in this particular system we've taken those, um, taken those precautions. So what happens is we're creating this bank of manure. We're, we're, we're filling in this bank of manure. So anybody really can do something like this if they have enough volume. It can be done in smaller 
volumes. It can be done in larger volumes. This happens to be a 300 head um, heifer, heifer um, facility. So what they're doing is they're going to take part of this room and fill it up. There are air channels underneath it. They are sucking air through there. So we're not blowing. Oftentimes when we have a system, and in the system that we saw yesterday, we were blowing some air. We are allowing air to circulate. This is actually a system where we're sucking air through pipes, and then we're heating hot water with the air that's being sucked through the pipes. Let me keep going with that. We've got our 140 degrees there. We know that. The moving parts in these things are very small fans. It's the only moving part in them, so they don't have a lot of parts. It's like the system we saw yesterday, not a lot of parts to have to maintain. This is the expensive part. They have isobar heat exchangers. And in this particular farm, they're using the hot water for wash water. In another farm, they're running that hot water through the floors um, for radiant heat. So there are lots of different ways that this can happen. We can also convert it into electricity, the heat into electricity, and use it that way. So these isobar exchangers uh, allow us to do that. System yield, when we're doing something like this, we have a compost product for sale or use. Good thing. Diversifying. We also have a lot of BTUs. So we're getting a lot of energy off of a system like this. And the system doesn't have to work all together. We can just work one. Let me just jump back a couple. We can work part of that floor or all that floor because each of those, um, each of those uh, pipes can work independently. So we can say, OK, put on motor one and three. And those have manure over them, so we're going to pull the air off of those. Just, I'm going to jump back to this other one, this that I referred to before, if it will. OK, so the one down here is a mobile one. So this tube here um, is snaked into a pile. It's coiled into a pile. And we can actually move this thing around. And this one is heating, is going to be heating, or is heating right now, that greenhouse right there uh, for spring plants. So it's a really diverse system. We have all this manure. We have to think about it. We have digester uh, sessions next to us. We have a lot of energy in manure, and we really have to be thinking more and more about that. I work with a lot of people um, all over the country um, to think about how this works, um, from poultry farmers to you know, uh, uh, an algae farmer in Maine that needed four degrees. So they said, we need four slow degrees. I was like, OK, well, we take a wood chip pile, and we put that pipe right through the wood chip pile. And that'll give us our four degrees for the winter, so we optimize our algal growth. So um, just stuff for us to think about. Um, this is a really a resource. It has lots of nutrients. When we ha manage it badly, we're going to have problems with it. We're going to have pollution. But when we compost properly, we have an asset there, and it's something that we really want to do. So encourage our farmers to make those windrows, not make this big amorphous pile that's, um, that's not going to breathe, it's not going to allow, not going to facilitate that composting process. Let's make those piles that will facilitate this process, and um, you know, if they do nothing else, they'll have a product if they just lay it out right. Um, so all different types of technology. All different uh, ideas, all different levels of, um, of um, energy needed to, to make these things work. But 